the universe has not existed forever. It was born. Around 1382 billion years ago, matter, energy, space, and time erupted into being in a fireball called the Big Bang. It expanded and, from the cooling debris, there congealed galaxies, islands of stars of which our Milky Way is one among about two trillion. Our solar system is estimated to have been born a little after 9 billion years after the Big Bang, making it about 4.6 billion years old. Within the next billion years or so afterwards, the Earth in its mostly spherical shape was formed. And then, Homo sapiens, you and I, first appeared on this blue planet about 200,000 years ago, like a cosmic jackpot. But like the saying, all good things must come to an end. Somewhere between a second and a millennium from now, you and I will die. Our body and all of its parts will cease functioning and rejoin the Earth as regular, lifeless stuff. The Earth, too, will die, engulfed by an expanding, aging sun. The sun will burn off all of its fuel and end up a white dwarf, then burn out and die. The Milky Way will collide with nearby Andromeda and form a large elliptical galaxy which will die by losing all of its stars to intergalactic space. The corpses of those remaining stars will die, decaying into their constituent parts. The universe will age onward until all matter is either stored in black holes or floating as free elementary particles. Those black holes will evaporate and the universe will die. All that was will be an icy cold nothing, forever. This is one of the happier possible endings. This heat death, as in the death of heat, at least leaves us time to say goodbye. The truth is, the universe far predates humans. It will far outlast humans and contemplating its death is a depressing effort that highlights our incredible insignificance. At least studying the physics of it all serves as a nice pastime while we wait to dissolve into nothingness. Heat death, or the big freeze, is generally considered the most likely future based on how things are looking today. The universe is expanding and will continue expanding. As things move farther apart, stars will form less frequently from the sparser dust and gas. The last black holes will have slowly evaporated into energy through the theoretical process proposed by Stephen Hawking, perhaps in a Google, that's 10 to the power of 100 years. And maybe sometime afterward, the remaining particles will decay, and the entire universe will assume an average temperature of nearly, but not exactly absolute zero. Basically, the universe will be so big and sparse that the odds of finding anything at all will be effectively absolute zero. None of this will happen anytime soon. Provided humans survive our own self-destructive tendencies, the Earth's atmosphere could have another billion years, and the Sun may be 7 billion to 10 billion years before it grows into a red giant, ejects its outer layers, and remains just a glowing core around the same size as the Earth, but packing far more mass, called a white dwarf. Smaller red stars will stick around for perhaps a hundred trillion years. Maybe humans can settle on a planet orbiting a nice red dwarf like Proxima Centauri to live out our days. These are timescales far beyond human comprehension. Think of the amount of time it would take to walk across the universe at its present size, if you had to stop and count every atom in the universe after each step. I guess everyone tends to feel depressed about it. Some more eventful theorized fates could arrive sooner. Imagine a future where the universe, all too soon, tears itself apart. First come the clusters, with their galaxies pulled away from each other. Then, the galaxies dissolve. Then, the star systems and the planets. And then, atoms themselves. Eventually, space-time is torn asunder, rendering the universe uninhabitable. This is a potential future known as the Big Rip. It sounds scary and almost impossible to imagine, but the truly horrifying part is that some evidence seems to be pointing directly toward that fate. A quarter century ago, astronomers discovered dark energy, which is the name given to the apparent accelerated expansion of the universe. This dark energy is deeply mysterious. We do not currently understand what causes it, where it came from, or what it's going to do. 
but that hasn't stopped theorists from guessing. The simplest thing dark energy could be is a so-called cosmological constant. In this simple picture, dark energy is a substance that permeates all of space and time. There's dark energy everywhere, including in the room you're in right now. This dark energy is perfectly constant. It's exactly the same all through space and time. This substance causes the expansion of the universe to accelerate, but otherwise, it never changes. Another possibility is that the substance behind dark energy can double back on itself, causing itself to amplify with time. This situation is known as phantom dark energy, or just phantom energy. In this case, the acceleration would go up with time. This ramping up of the acceleration, ironically, would make the observable universe far smaller. That's because the velocity between any two points would continue to grow, even beyond the speed of light. In this scenario, galaxies would fly away from each other so quickly that they would never see each other again. This would make the observable limit of what we could see shrink with time in an uncontrolled way. If two points were ripped apart faster than light, they would no longer interact through any force of physics, whereas a constant dark energy would leave behind already intact objects, like clusters of galaxies, phantom energy could tear them apart. In a finite amount of time, billions of years from now, clusters would tear apart, followed by ever smaller objects. Even atomic and nuclear bonds would not withstand the onslaught. Eventually, space itself would dissolve in an event known as the Big Rip. Any two points, no matter how close, would be ripped infinitely far away from each other. The very structure of space-time, the causal foundations that make our universe work, would no longer behave. The universe would just break down. However, luckily, most physicists do not believe this scenario can actually happen. For one, it's unclear how this process of ripping interacts with the other laws of physics. For instance, quarks cannot be torn apart. When you attempt to do so, you need so much energy that new quarks materialize out of the vacuum. So ripping apart quarks just might lead to other interesting interactions. In addition, phantom energy doesn't behave according to normal physics. To make this work, the phantom substance has to have negative kinetic energy but negative kinetic energy usually doesn't happen in the universe. An example of this would be a ball naturally rolling uphill. So this would be a pretty major exception to our established understanding of physics. But while physics theory seems stacked in favor of heat death over the big rip, observations don't forbid it. Then there's the chance that the very vacuum of space itself could change. And then the world ends not with a bang, but with a quantum vacuum decay of the ground state of the universe to its true minimum. The universe underwent radical phase transitions in the past. For those who don't know, phase transitions are when a substance undergoes a rapid, radical transformation. They happen all the time. For example, you boil water, and it transforms from a liquid into a gas. You cool that same water, and it turns into a block of ice. And on a cosmic scale, perhaps the most exotic phase transitions are those that happen to quantum fields. Quantum fields are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. Every kind of particle, say a photon or an electron, is really just a local manifestation of an underlying field. That field soaks all of space and time like bread dipped in olive oil. The way those fields interact and communicate with each other makes up the forces and physics of our existence. That existence is based on four fundamental forces. Gravity, the weak force, electromagnetism, and the strong force. But it hasn't always been this way. In the earliest moments of the cosmos, those forces were united. As the universe expanded and cooled, the quantum fields underwent phase transitions splitting apart one by one. The last phase transition occurred when the electromagnetic force split from the weak force. That splitting gave rise to the photon and the W and Z bosons, the carriers of those two forces. Since that event, which happened when the universe wasn't even a second old, 
everything's been stable. No more splitting, no more phase transitions. The four forces of nature went on to shape and sculpt the evolution of the cosmos for billions of years. But the stability of our universe might not last forever. A situation that is stable for now could quickly deteriorate if something were to go wrong. All it would take is one little shake in the wrong direction, in some random patch of the universe, where the Higgs falls apart and the underlying quantum fields find a new, more stable configuration. That region of new universe would then propagate outward at nearly the speed of light through the old universe. This kind of phase transition is called a false vacuum decay. It references the idea that the vacuum of our universe is a false one. It's not as stable as it might appear, and it will someday decay into something new. To give you a better picture, let's imagine spending your whole life living on a platform, thinking it was the solid ground. This platform is the metastable state. Maybe one day, the platform will collapse and reveal a true floor a hundred feet below. The laws of physics, as you know them, would no longer work, and you would fall and die. This is essentially what would happen if the universe snapped from a metastable state to a more stable state, if we were living on the platform all along. This would end the universe as we know it, since this new, lower-energy universe would not support the existence of the present-day standard model that governs the identities and interactions of particles that make up matter. Although this scenario is unlikely such an event would occur before the heat death does, it would be a spectacular death. Image that at some spot in the universe, you'd create a bubble of true vacuum that expands at the speed of light and envelopes the universe, destroying everything. Its light speed means you wouldn't see it coming. The death would arrive simultaneously, with the warning that death was coming. But not every possible cosmic conclusion is one of utter desolation and emptiness. Maybe in some distant, post-heat death future, the energy in the universe's vacuum could spontaneously jump back upward at a point, initiating inflation at that point in space from which entirely new universes form. Perhaps that's how our universe formed, and perhaps there are an infinite number of universes forming in the same way decaying out of an infinitely inflating grander universe. Maybe there are places beyond the reach of our own universe that won't be impacted by the demise of our own. Certainly, this is the most optimistic point of view among theories, because even though our part of the universe will die out, other parts that may be teeming with life would go on forever. However, our universe dies either way. And maybe dark energy isn't an innate constant value to the universe, Maybe its strength is decreasing, which might lead to the universe's expansion eventually slowing. Everything could then turn around under gravity's force and collapse. That's the big crunch. There's a lot we don't know about the universe, so any or none of these ideas could be right. Any new discovery about the nature of dark energy, the Higgs boson, or space-time itself, could reveal a vastly different fate of the universe where everything wastes away to an infinitely vast nothingness. Everything collapses, or new universes spawn from the ashes of the old, or something else entirely happens. Regardless, humanity's existence and legacy, and everything else ever, will cease to exist or have meaning. But even if we do have a bunch of worst-case doomsday scenarios, they wouldn't play out for hundreds of billions of years. So, in the meantime, we can enjoy the nice, calm cosmos. That's all the information that we have for today. Don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. Your support motivates us to continue creating more and more quality videos. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.